Hello everyone, NadLabs here. Today we're going to be making this flashing lights demo in the Godot game engine. And just a little bit of warning, if you are sensitive to flashing lights, I suggest you do not watch this video because obviously of the flashing lights. But other than that warning, um, this is essentially what we're going to be making. It's just a simple demo where we can move the mouse around and we can see that there's these shadows that occur at these blocks that we can place ourselves. And we can see that uh, we get this flashing light. And we can even make another version where there's a, a very aggressive uh, flashiness if you want to call it where the uh, light flashes a lot and um that's about it so let's get to making this so essentially what we're going to need is a game scene to hold all of our nodes we have to have a tile map and this is just a regular old tile map i did nothing special to it you can see that uh these godot icons that i'm using for my tiles there's no collision on them and i just highlighted the region of the godot tile that's all i did and you can see i can just place them down i'm going in the order of importance so I think the can uh, I think a canvas modulate is really important if you want to get that lighting effect. As you can see, it literally defines the entire thing. It creates all the shadows. We have a occluder folder which houses a bunch of sprites. Sorry, uh, we have a bunch of sprites in here, and you can see that these sprites are basically the Godot sprite, which I was able to change to a red color. And then we have a light occluder 2D. This light occluder this light occluder 2D is really what makes those shadows. Um, let me just go over here. But you can see when I turn this canvas modulate on. Sorry, I forgot to mention that you have to set its color to black. I guess that's kind of apparent. But you can see that it actually defines the shadows. As you can see, the shadows are being updated. That that defines the shadows. And how do we do that? Well, we're basically going to say, actually, you know what? I'll delete it and start again from scratch. So the light occluded 2D. You need to actually place down the points. So, yeah, we're going to create one. And, yeah, I'm just placing down the points. And you can see I have my light occluder and you can see uh, when I click it, it updates and I have my light occluder here and it says closed on, right? Obviously I want to close because I want to make shadow and we have this call mode. Uh, this call mode, and obviously I don't think that description over there, the calling mode to use is not really helpful. Uh, but if you want to see the difference, we can honestly just test it out. The, the counterclockwise call mode essentially allows this uh, occlude object, occ occluding object, if, if you will, to go inside the light, be lit up and let light pass through it. If we do cl clockwise or disabled, you can see that it will not let light through it. So that's just something to keep in mind for the game you're designing or app you're designing. And that's about it for the light occluder. Uh, I already talked about the tile map. And now onto the player. So now we're going to the player. So we can see uh, we have to uh, give our uh, player a light 2D. And essentially what you want to do is enabled. We have a texture over here. Um, and I'm sorry, I tried to keep uh, my uh, tutorials uh, texture free. Give me one second. Do you see when I go into my default uh, photo viewer on Windows? Um, it's just a gradient that goes from white to black. That's all it is. You can take this texture. I don't care. Use it wherever you want. I have no issues with that. And essentially, you just want to put into its texture. You just want to put into texture over here. You can change the scale to whatever you want. I doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference. Energy one, just leave it to that. It doesn't really matter. You have to enable shadows. They're not enabled by default. You can see this is the default option. This is the enabled option. So that's something you have to keep in mind. And that's basically it. And then we have our timer over here, which is just going to help us dictate how we make the lights flashy. So let's get right into coding it. So you can see that I attach a script and I get a couple uh, declarations to our variable, like our timer and our light. And then in the ready and process function, I just have uh, I just have it so we randomize our variables so we don't get the same flashiness each time. And I also have a global position. And, uh, then I also have the basic uh, mouse following movement, which is just continuously set our position to where the mouse is positioned, uh, simple enough. And then I'm going to go connect the signal and um, uh, it's already connected because I made the tutorial, but I'm just making, I'm just doing it again. So uh, we're going to connect that signal and we're basically going to say a couple of things. We're going to say that every time this timer times out, we're going to set the light, the light's energy to a random amount. And you remember I talked about it earlier, um, not in the timer, but I talked about this uh, light uh, energy variable. Essentially what that means is if I just go over here to oh, one second, you can see that when I grab this light 2D and I increase its energy, I can get a really bright light. Or if I get go below one, I get a very dim light. That's all it means. And that's all I'm going to be changing through code. And you can see that when I have it like this, every second in the left hand corner, you can see that uh, I'm printing out the random variable, a random float, which sets the light value. But you can see that this is actually like a really bad flashlight. Like it's not what you kind of see in movies where it's like flickering. One way we can make it the slight flicker like crazy is we say timer dot start. Every time this timer times out, we're going to say start and we're going to say random out divided by 20. So we're basically taking this float and we're going to say divide that value by 20. So 
Let me just get my calculator there. So let's say we have 0 0.1. So that's a very dim light. And 83 divided by 20. That's a really small number. 0 0.005. So for 0 0.005th of a second, if that's even the correct way to say it, but for a very small amount of time, we're going to have a very dark flashlight. For a very long amount of time, we're going to have a very bright flashlight. So that's kind of what you see in movies, right? Kind of. And if we want to make sure that we don't get too dark, we can say, if we say the random amount is less than 0 0.5, which is really dark, then we can say, just set it equal to 1. And that's all we really have to do. And you can see that we get an even brighter flashy light in case you want to have, let the player actually see something. And then we have a really simple light where it's just really calm, but still kind of flashy. And here we're doing the same thing. We say if it's too dark, just reset it. Same set of code up here. But then we're saying if it's too bright, set it equal to a dimmer value. So it's uh, it's more calm on the player's eyes. It doesn't uh, jump around too much, but it still does jump around. And you see, it's it's kind of hovering in the same area. It was kind of dark over there for a bit, but this is generally the range that you'll find the light in. And you see that it has my mouse movement has nothing to do with the flashiness of the light, although it might look like that because of correlation. Uh, people tend to think correlation equals causation. It doesn't. It's just purely based off randomness or pseudo randomness if you really want to get into the details. Essentially, that's it. We're doing a similar thing here. We do timer.start and we say random out divided by a random range. So this time we're not basing it off the randomness or the brightness of the flashlight, but we're, ran we're rather basing it off just randomness in general. So uh, this is a little bit calm. And now remember, you can mix and match. So you can put this down here and cross that out and you'd get something similar. You know, you'd get um, a darker flashlight lasting a da or darker flash lasting for a shorter amount of time and a brighter flash lasting for a longer amount of time. And anyway, that concludes the tutorial. It's really short. I just wanted to get the basics out there and that's all you need to have like a flickering light demo in your game. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for watching. And if you'd like to see a tutorial on a specific topic, please comment it down below. I'll try my best to work on it or make a video about it. And if you, if you just want to say hi or something, sure. And if you have any questions, comment and the codes on GitHub in the description. So that's all I have to say. Have a great day. Why did I go to distraction free mode?